sure. I think that the goal with this record was to make something that would surprise people, and if we if we didn't if we didn't sort of shock people with uh, you know a, a sound change or an aesthetic change with every record, I think that we would potentially lose the audience that we already have or lose the interest of the audience that we already have. But it would also mean that we would potentially not garner a new audience. And the biggest goal with this record being our seventh was that we have this really hardcore fan base that really supports us and loves us. But to sort of survive, I guess, like kind of <laughs> like Darwinian, like you have to change, you have to because you need to be uh, drawing in the new generation of kids that are coming up in the scene. So we wanted to do something that would really it would be both attractive and exciting to the people who had been with us all these years, and that would hopefully knock people's socks off who didn't know the band. It's getting underneath me All right tonight, It's how to get you underneath me the fan response to Heartthrob has been pretty overwhelming, actually. But there were initial like comments from the fan base when we released Closer, the first single, because it is the most extreme, I think, on the record in terms of like sound change and pop. The fans, I think, if anything, their only hesitation initially when they heard the song was that maybe that it would be so commercially successful they would lose that connection with us. But I think that the thing that makes people love Tegan and Sarah and stick with Tegan and Sarah is, you know, are the stories and the intense emotional uh, integrity behind the songs and I think that is still on this record including on the song Closer and I think once we started touring and the record came out the fans really uh, felt that and so it's been really awesome I mean so far so far so you good. You can pretty much knock on anything in I know this anything place. in this yeah. room but yeah no so far so good. interesting transition is when you take the material from the record and actually start playing it live because it, it has to be it has to be cohesive with the rest of the material and and we're always sort of trying to like update and make all of the material sound mo as modern as possible you know like there there are certain sounds from certain records that are outdated now and so we want it to have like a, a you know a more muscular sound or something more contemporary or whatever and so it's interesting because when you have this new batch of songs that are just like so fresh and so exciting and whatever, you want to make sure that they still fit with all the old songs. And the thing that is really neat about Closer is that I think it's pretty much, it is, it is the highest point in our set, it's the climax of the set. It sort of has raised the ceiling on what we can do dynamically live. It allows us to sort of build a, a wider arc. I even see some of the kids who, their holdouts, you know, the first verse and first chorus, it's like they're like, I don't want to have fun, and then by the second chorus, they're like, yeah, I'm having a, you know, it's, it's like they're drunk at a wedding, you know? like. It's great. I think that we're going to definitely um, give love and attention to that song, Now I'm All Messed Up, just because it's it's a fan favorite. I'm not certain that it'll be a single, as a, I think it's a little bit of like a, it's pretty epic, but I love the song and I definitely wrote that one to be as bare bones as possible, sort of in like almost like a humiliating, confessional kind of way, like I wrote the most excruciating lyrics I can think of um, without any sort of, I don't know, without any sort of opaque kind of like hiding behind poetry or metaphor, I just went for it and said said what would be the most direct way um, to communicate like how badly someone had hurt you and I really love the idea that as the song sort of transformed in the studio, the, the, the intention of the song is to tell this person like you're done, you're moving on, it's, it's over. But behind all of that emotion and that empowerment, there's this desire that they'll still come back to you. You know, they'll still come back and be with you because you've like you've really shown them now that you're serious and it's over. But deep downside, you would totally crumble and take them back in a second if, if they wanted to. It's another one similar to Closer that I feel like has helped elevate our show to a different kind of emotional state, and, and I feel like the audience. Um, I think the audience is, is, is helping to sort of like make that song even bigger and more explosive than, than the recorded version, which doesn't always happen. Sometimes you capture magic on record and it's really hard to translate that live, and this one definitely feels like it's sort of like, it's sort of casting aside the recorded version and creating something much, something, something much bigger. You never really loved her anyway. What do I take? It's lonely road, nobody to walk with me. Start fresh all over again Why won't you 
you just comfort me? I think most of Sarah and I's music from our back catalog is based on personal experience. I think, you know, we definitely do our best to leave it general enough so that the listener can project their own experience and their own emotions onto the song. I think that truly is why our audience is so passionate about our music. It's They do seem to really like us, but I think the music is open enough that it really does become the soundtrack to their experiences. And I think that our job is to make sure that nothing is ever specific enough, that it eliminates anyone from enjoying it as their own song. So I think that we definitely, though, as we've gotten older, we're, we use our imagination a little bit more. I'm not sure that we're like quite so autobiographical, but that doesn't mean that I don't think the songs are truly from our own experience. I just think some of the stuff we're writing about is stuff that happened 15 years ago. I mean truth and like, you know, like exactly what happened starts to get a little more uh, confusing. So, you know, it feels a little more like uh, my perception of things or, you know, how I want things to be, my my dream, what, 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 what it could have been, you know, those sort of things start to creep into the story. Whose life you're making worthwhile. Obviously you want to have your records sound as amazing as they possibly can, but there's really only so much you can do when you're sort of self-generating the emotion. You know, there's a there's a there's a sort of like a feedback loop or like a cycle of energy that happens when you're playing live in a good on a good good night and in with a great audience where you become like Superman. Like sometimes I feel like I'm gonna have like an aneurysm or something. Like I'm just like giving it like all you know. Superman would never have an aneurysm. Though. He might. He's flying around and he's got all that Superman. He is Superman. But you feel like you suddenly are like this big force on stage and you can't, it's really hard to feel that way in the studio. Just again, it's all about like taking the show and taking our catalog to the next level, so. Girl, if you want, I can stop you at you. Girl, if you want, I can stop you.